George Seurat pointillism lesson. It's another painting lesson for sixth grade. And it's based on the art of George Seurat. He was, he was French. He was born in 1859. Um, and I've got a whole page here that I'm just going to read because there's a lot of interesting details in it. Uh, soon after the camera was invented, artists began to explore new ways of painting. They didn't want their pictures to look like photographs. One young artist who thought of a new method of painting was George Seurat. He filled his canvases with points of color. His advanced dot painting is called pointillism. It's a form of impressionism, which the goal of impressionism was to capture the essence of a subject through light and color. Seurat was born in 1859 in Paris, in the heart of the art world. He liked art, he loved to draw, he used to draw pencil copies of his favorite masterpieces. When he was in art college, he tried new ways of painting, and he soon discovered a method no one had ever tried before, and he called it pointillism. Art is harmony, he said, just like an orchestra playing a symphony. A painting is a coming together of many parts to create a whole. To prove his point, Seurat painted every single part as a dot. This might not seem so odd to us now because we have computers and that's how computers create art. They're, they're pixels of color. Hmm. This is, that's exactly what he did, only he did it all by hand. The dots the colored dots, <laughs> no, <laughs> the dots colored and shaped the images in his picture. I forgot where I left off. Oh. The dots colored and shaped the images in his pictures. Different colored dots were layered on top of each other, and they all came together to create a harmonious whole. Thoreau's most famous painting is A Sunday on the Grand Jacques. That one. Which even I know that one. Which he painted in 1884. It's a huge painting. It's about seven feet tall, wow. and ten feet wide, and it took him two years to paint it dot by dot. It's one of the most famous paintings of art, most famous pieces of art in the world. Notice the light and the shadows. How did Seurat make these so dramatic? If you look closely at the painting, you can see that he added dots of lighter paint where bright highlights appear, here where the sun's shining, and darker colored dots where the shadows appear. Um, in one sense, the painting is very static. It, the people all look very stiff. There's no sense of movement or animation in it at all. And the drama in the painting comes from the, the high contrast between the bright light, bright sunshine, and the shadows. Another example of Seurat's use of bright light can be seen in Seine at the Grand Jatte, which is that one. Um, note the white highlights on the water. Darker colors are used in the Maria at En Fleur. closely at all the different colors he used to get the dark tones. Well, you can't see from there, but he's got blue and red and brown and yellow in here on a black background. Um, in here there's green and red and, and light blue and dark blue and orange. And they all just sort of blur together to create the shapes. Seurat liked to use complementary colors. Complementary colors are those that are opposite each other on the color wheel. This one is called the circus. And that one must be the sideshow. Um, and then you can ask the, the kids to, to name the complementary colors that they see. They might know this, they might not. This one has blue and orange in it all over, but you can see it especially right here in the center, the focal point of the picture. And the sideshow has yellow and purple, and red and green. Mm -hmm. You can really see the red and green in the building, 
doors, whatever those are. to start this lesson actually has two paintings the first one is a piece of fruit and the second one is a landscape we're going to practice with our piece of fruit first you place it on you get two pieces of paper each child has two pieces of paper place one fruit on the paper and um, do a quick pencil sketch of it to start with. Again, make sure the kids draw it large enough. I've seen them draw, you know, tiny little quarter-sized pieces of fruit and then they get frustrated because they can't paint it. Just draw it real lightly. Uh, quickly. Okay. And then after they've sketched the outline of their fruit, have them notice the shadows that are created on the paper by the lights. Um, and then include that shadow in their sketch. Draw an outline of it. In this case, there's multiple shadows, but I'm just going to stick with the one. Um, outline the shadow area in pencil. And then you fill in the color of the fruit using Seurat's technique of layered colors. For example, if you're painting an orange, don't use orange paint. You don't get orange paint. We make palettes with red, yellow, blue, and white. You have to make your own orange um, by mixing yellow and red. The darker red oranges should be used on the shadow edge of the fruit, and the lighter yellow oranges should be used on the edges where the light is shining. In other words, the light is kind of coming from this direction and making highlights here. So you would use your lighter blended colors in this area and the more deep blended colors on the back here where the light is not shining. So the way you do that is with the little Q-tip, you start mixing colors. Um, which gets tricky when the kids are sharing palettes. There are big plates in there. I just put um, photo ones out for tonight. So should these kids get their own, or maybe every pair? I don't remember how they did that. Um, I wouldn't have more than two kids using the same palette, I think, unless, you know, like these two could could easily use the same because they're kind of in the same colors. I don't know. I guess I'd play that by ear. And then, man, I almost started brushing with this. <laughs> Just sort of dot the paint on. And it's okay if the dots touch each other. And it's okay if they touch each other. If you don't want them to, if you want to create highlights, then space them out a little bit. So I'm going to pick the ball Cool. 
And some kids are so meticulous and careful about this, and others aren't. So they are going to do their whole fruit, and then how do they do the shadow? It's best to, put, to actually start with the lighter colors and then work up to the darker colors, which is not what I'm doing, but that's all right. And then to do the shadow, um, Use the color of the fruit that is reflected onto the white paper and layer shades of the complementary colors, in this case blue, on top of the fruit color. Which means, I think, that you, use, you start with orange, paint your shadow in orange, and then, and then you add blue to it. And there should be plenty of Q-tips, and I remember that, that the kids come through these very quickly. Do you just use the straight blue, or do they mix the blue with the orange? I'm going to mix it first. So it's not just quite kind of soften soft it a little blue. bit. Oh, that looks good. And then, and then just layer it on there. You'll want the shadow to be darker, of course, where it's right up next to the fruit. These actually come out really well when you know you take the time to do the whole thing. The kids get really nice results from this. So they do their fruit. They do their fruit. Um, don't forget to put some of your shadow color along the shadow edge of the fruit. They mean on the fruit itself because that helps give a sense of dimension the appearance that it's round. Um, just a little bit though. And you know, you can help the kids blending their colors. Adding white into their color makes it paler, which is nice for the highlighted areas. Um, instead of, and then if they want at the very end, like this apple, this is a really shiny apple and I'm getting a lot of highlights right here on the top of it. Um, they can use pure white there to to show those highlights or they can use white mixed in with a little bit tiny little bit of their their mm -hmm. main color their underlying color to soften it a little bit um and around the stem too actually this, this is a good fruit. that was
would be fun to paint. <laughs> I thought the tomato looked fun. The tomato does tomato look fun. The tomato has great colors. Yeah. It even looks real. It's got green and orange and red and mm -hmm. all kinds of things in it. Yeah. See, when you really start looking at them, there's a lot there. Uh, okay. That's it for the fruit. Um, and then the landscape. Do you have that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll show you these. This one, this is cool because it's got the multiple shadows that I was talking about. Um, and it's got a nice, interesting variation in the orange color, too. It's good, good texture in these paintings. The mango. A really cool shadow. You see how they carried some of that shadow into the, mm -hmm. into the yellow. Here's your tomato. Mm -hmm. That looks like my tomato again in this next one. That'll be your tomato. Mm, a grown up did that one. That's a really nice apple. Oh, that's a good example of the shiny highlights with the white. Yep, yep. And it's got a real good shadow, too. See how they, they made it very dark and intense right up next to the fruit, and then it sort of fades out. Very cool. And then these are some samples of the landscapes. And you may not have time to get to the landscape, right? But right. It depends. Leave it up to the kids. You know, if they're totally involved in it, don't rush them. Um, I, I haven't actually done the landscape part because <laughs> we ran out of time. That was neat. That's gorgeous. Look at that. Beautiful. George Seurat would be proud. He would. Um, we have all these landscape photographs, mm. calendar pictures and whatnot, which you know, you can just scatter out on a on a table and have the kids come up and choose one. <sighs> that one. And the way you do the landscape is can I find a good one? Can you see that one? Mm -hmm. sure, okay. Um y you start out the same way, making a pencil sketch. You used your other piece of paper that was your your foundation for your fruit. Take that and draw a pencil sketch of the main shapes, you know, just sort of a real, real quick outline drawing. Um, you're going to want these mountains to be sort of the same color, and then you've got the foreground here with the pasture and the trees, and then the middle area, which is a very blurry and non-distinct. Um, just sort of draw those, those main areas and then start mixing your colors um, using the same you know the same technique as before and go for it you can see that they're fairly simplified but you know you get the idea of what's there mm -hmm. beautiful and that's pretty much that um, it takes probably again about 45 minutes at least for each painting and just encourage the kids you know to layer their colors as much as possible which is this apple is a really good example of that. the different colors they've got going in there mm -hmm. um, and let them have fun with it they usually really like this lesson definitely well thank you so much